everybody. We're going to make mice today for the fifth time. <laughs> We've done a lot of mouse videos. We had our original wire armature mouse video with tiny toes, which was way, way back. And, um, and then we had the sleepy mouse, which is one of our most popular um, supply packs and tutorials. And we made those, and then we made sleepy mouse as a felt along. And then we made these little guys, which are a little bit kind of in between. No tiny toes, but a nice update to the armature mouse. And we did this as a felt along as well. Now we have the supply pack and we would like to make a more specific tutorial for this little mouse, which is called the Old Field Mouse, if you want to Google an image. They, they should. Yeah. They're cute little guys. <laughs> so um, we are going to use the supply pack. It creates four. And this project is a great level two project. You could do it as a level one, but you're going to, and I will take my time and explain everything as a level one. Um, but it is, a, you know, it has some, some tiny wrapping and some details like the ears and the tail that might take, take a little bit of practice. I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to need my felting surface and needles. And I will use, in addition, I have the, the face ace here and my punch tool. Um, of course, just pliers, ruler. And I have my um, Zuli tool. I can't totally remember if we use this or not, but I think mostly we're on the face ace because of the size of this project. Would you like to, do you have anything to add before we get started? Uh, what do mice like to wear for shoes? <laughs> I don't know what. Squeakers. <laughs> Uh, Could you imagine tiny little mouse sneakers? They, they'd be Especially very, if they squeaked. They'd be very cute. <laughs> They're very cute. All right, let's get to it. What is nice about, um, well, whether you're just getting started in needle felting or well into your journey, um, the supply packs that make several are really fun because they all turn out different. And if you're learning, you'll see progress. So the mouse uses um, half, each mouse uses half of a chenille stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut one of those in half. And so that makes the four, I'll just cut all of them in half so that I, both of them, so that I have my four, these are the tails. And then we have 22 gauge wires and each mouse uses one 22 gauge wire and a half of a 22 gauge wire. So these are my wires, a whole 22 gauge, a half a 22 gauge, and a half of a chenille stem. I'm gonna put the rest back. The first fiber that I'm going to use is the alabaster, which is created in-house. It's a um, skin tone blend. And let's see, I'll tell you what else we have. We have copper core. We have, ooh, that's really wrappy. <laughs> we have uh, Gen Gen Tan. Serafino white, these are all both also house made, uh, black core and nut merino, very simple supply pack. Now, since we're going to be making four mice, we try to be generous with all of the fiber, but it might help to split your fiber into quarters so that you know you're using, you know, about the right amount. So I just took a quarter of my alabaster. The first thing we want to do is create the armature. And in this project, it does help to wrap parts of the armature before um, we make the armature. 
So I'm going to start by finding the center of my um, half of a 22 gauge piece and fold a really tight little point because this is going to be the nose. And then I can um, put some tacky wrap on there. It just helps the fiber to stick. If you don't have any, it'll be, it'll be okay. And before we can build the armature, I actually want to wrap this nose. So I'm going to take a thin strip off of my whole piece of alabaster roving and then pull a piece in half that's maybe about four inches. Now since I'm left-handed, I'll be starting on the right and I'll wrap away from myself. If you're right-handed, most likely you'll start on the left and wrap away from yourself. So I'm starting about an inch out from the nose and my goal is to get some pink on the end of the nose. Whoops, I just split my fiber. So I'm gonna go around and then when I get to the tip of the mountain here, I'm gonna crisscross a little bit. So I'm gonna come over this side through the center and then go over this side and then go back over this side. And that puts a nice little bit of pink wool on the tip of the nose. I just feel like I didn't quite get the um, very end. I probably should have wrapped a little more before I started crisscrossing. So I just went back up again. Okay, that's all I need. So I'm just taking off whatever's extra. You don't always have to use all of the wool that I start with or that you start with. And then just get this just by pressing hard and twisting around, you can get, you can get that secure. And I'm going to stab this a little bit just to make sure everything's integrated and locked together. And pinch it as much as I can. If you're stabbing this tiny area like this, just be aware that the wire's in there and stay to the edges and bounce lightly. So now we want to make the head of our mouse and that's going to be about an inch and a half from the end of the nose to where the wires meet. And I want to make it into a diamond shape. So that's an inch and a half so I'm good there. And then I'm gonna give it one really tight twist because they don't really have a neck. <laughs> just kind of, they're just kind of like a head to body shape with little legs, little legs sticking out. And that leaves, you should have at least two and a half inches of wire left. Alrighty. Now that we have our little head shape, we're gonna take our second wire and find the center, and give it a little pinch so we don't lose it. And then put it underneath of the, underneath of the head and put the two um, tips of the, of the mountain together and then twist internally the long wire and the small wire one time. And that puts your arms, little arms shooting straight down and your back wires coming back. And the remaining length of the legs right now is about two and a quarter inches, which is perfect. Now we're gonna make the back. You wanna leave a little bit of space here. Um, it's not a huge space, but you don't wanna pinch the shoulders together. You wanna leave that, that width between the front legs. The distance of this, the, this triangle where the two wires are coming together doesn't really matter. What matters is that your back is two and three quarter inches from the arm to the end of the twist. So I'm gonna look at it from the side. I went a little bit long, so I'm back it up, back it up a twist here. 
So I want it to be two and three quarter inches from here to the arm. And I'm right there. I can put one of these back in really tightly. Okay. And so right now the remaining length that I have of wire, just to give you a gauge for where you should be is about six inches. And we want to cut this. We don't need all of this. So we're going to cut it to three and a half inches. The way that I like to do that is to find that distance, bend it, and then, and then you can cut it. And when in doubt, give yourself a little extra room. You can always cut more wire off. <laughs> you can't add it back on. And then to shape the legs, uh, we're going to give him a little elbow at three quarters of an inch, and that's a backwards bend. And he'll get a foot, but I wanna wrap the alabaster onto the foot before we bend it back. And on the hind legs, we're gonna do, I, I, the easiest way to describe it is just to take your thumb and kind of press this, press this forward on each side to give him that rounded knee or thigh. And then at two inches, we can measure your two inches first. At two inches, you wanna make the little back of his foot And then you can press that, press that thigh round with your thumb. And same thing, I'm going to fold the ends of his feet over, but we want to wrap, um, we want to wrap the foot in alabaster so that we get it nice and small and get wool right on the end of the foot. What's happening over there, Milo? That's a good question. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know. There's not a lot of mouse jokes. I mean, they, there are, but they're stupid. Yeah, we've been through a lot of them, too. Well, I don't even want to think about what we said last time, because I probably thought they were funny, and they're, they're just they're stupid. That's actually a little bit small. I'm going to save those pieces. I'm going to take another um, strip of alabaster. It's like the width of my finger. It's like half an inch of wool. I'm going to do that, two of those and split it in half lengthwise, and these will be for each foot. And a little bit of tacky wrap will help me out here. You know, there's a plethora of hmm. mouse proverbs. Oh. I, I think mice have been around for a long time. Yeah, and they're everywhere. Yep. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start just under the elbow this gets a lot of fiber on it, so I don't need to put the alabaster there. And I'm, I'm gonna keep my um, fiber ribbon very thin and tight and wrap down the leg here. And I'm gonna go as close as I can to the end. <laughs> and I'm gonna take about a quarter inch and fold the foot, fold the wire back and then keep wrapping, keep wrapping in the same direction. And that gives you this tiny little paw with your wire all tucked in with fiber, you know, all right on the end. You don't have to worry about your fiber slipping off of the end. And then I don't need to go too far back up. I'm actually gonna stop. And I could use the other half of this for the other side because I think that was about half of the fiber that I pulled. So this part, it takes a little bit of practice, um, but that's what we're doing. German proverb, okay. you ready? I'm ready. The cat's play is the mouse's death. <laughs> that's a pick me up to start, to start us off. <laughs> Oh. 
Poor here's another mice. here's another German proverb. This is a good one. Okay. A huckster who cannot pass off mouse turd for pepper has not learned his trade. <laughs> this is German. Yep. <laughs> How are you passing off? I'm trying to maybe I'm picturing mouse turd too big. Is it like a peppercorn? I think maybe a peppercorn. So funny. And what was the word? Huckster. Huckster. I'm going to have to look that up. So that is huckster goals right there. I've never, I don't know that I've ever heard huckster. Let's look it up. Is it like swindler? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> now we have little nose and little feet. And now we're going to do little hind feet. A person who sells small items, either door to door or from a stall. Mm. A hawker, a peddler. Oh, especially one who sells something in an aggressive, dishonest, or annoying way. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not, I'm not really a wool huckster. No, I'm gonna go with no there. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I'm just gonna start at the. Well, on this one, I'm gonna start before the back of the foot because I want a little bit of alabaster to blend into there. And when we do this um, joint, I can use the same crisscross technique that we used on the nose. Um, so you go, let me back up and show you. All right, we're gonna wrap down the foot here, just like we did the front legs. We could be a little bit thicker on the hind legs, close to the end as I can. Fold that quarter inch back and then keep wrapping away from you. And I'm gonna go the way back up to the back of the foot. All righty, let's do this other foot. Have another half of a strip. Got my tacky wrap on there. I'm gonna start mid leg, come down. I always do one of the hocks better than the other one. I think this is my not good one. So the trick is not to ever wrap the point, but to go around this wire through the middle and then around that wire. And that builds up a nice little triangle. We do this on a lot of shapes, making a lot of critters. Now I'm gonna go down the foot. Just always keep your ribbon smooth, as smooth and tight as you can. And I keep my working hands close together. That just reinforces all of the wrapping. And I fold my little toe around. and then continue back. I can do this one more time. So you might not need, sorry, you might not need to do that again. Just, you know, trust your own judgment of where you are with uh, the shapes that you're making. You're, you're apologizing to me and I'm about to interrupt your teaching <laughs> by sitting here wondering if people actually took mouse poop and sold it with pepper as corns. Like that must have been a thing because it's That's, a thing. That would be the proper use of the word disappointment when you got home from the huckster <laughs> lane and you were making your soup. Ew. And your pepper grinds, you put them in the mortar and pestle, and it didn't really. That could have that could have started the black plague. <laughs> mm. It's time to use some copper core. First thing I'm going to do is wrap the head. And oh, this one's a little on the thin side. So. Um, Sometimes the core, like you can see it's thicker here. Let me just get rid of this 
thinner spot. I'm not going to break this into quarters because there's plenty. Um, but, you know, we're not going to run into, plus it's just, it's a lot to work through. Um, so I'm going to start with about four inch pieces and split it in half, and that will give you a nice manageable amount to wrap. And what I wanna do is use the diamond shape to begin to build the head shape. So I can get it anchored on the neck, and then I'm gonna go from facet to facet. So I'm gonna go back here, and then over here, and then over here. So I keep making X's. And I'm keeping my ribbon kind of like the width of the, of the head facets. And you want to leave the whole point. We, the reason we put the pink on there was so that it was there and ready for us. So don't, don't cover up your pink. I do want to pinch that nose a little tighter. And then I'm going to do that again with this piece. A tug on your fiber helps kind of align it and smooth it out. So I'm making my X's. I have enough here. I'm just going to go straight around. Keeping that little pink nose. Okay, and then let's do the top of each leg. So again, I'm gonna take about a four inch piece, split it in half. And I'm just gonna go down to the elbow. Well, I'm gonna go down to where the um, alabaster starts. And back up. At the top here, I can sort of stab the fluff to make sure everything stays nice and tight. Uh, the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Don't take seriously the cat who mourns for a mouse. Oh, that's like, it's, it's kind of ruthless. It is. The cat's not, that's, they're not even honest. <laughs> On the hind legs, I'm going to use six inch pieces and then split it in half. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, we need our tail. So I want the tail to be about four inches and we have about six inches of wire here. Um, so I'm going to just on this twisted part of his back, just follow that like maybe three or four wraps around and then leave the remaining. And I like to leave the remaining coming up off the top of his back, not out from between under his legs. Uh, this just looks a little more realistic. Okay, so now that we have the tail on, I'm going to get some fiber on there, and I'm going to use the Gen Gen Tan for that. And I'm going to use a six inch strip and split it in half lengthwise. And that should give us enough to go from the, the base of the tail out to the tip. And I haven't been um, folding the end of the pipe cleaner over because it does get a good bit of wool on it and there's no, it's not feeling, you know, pokey or anything like that. And when you fold it over, it does bulk it up and make it hard to, um, to make it taper. So I'm just wrapping from the 
base of the tail out to the tip. And as I get near the end, I like to kind of, I like to start to uh, draft my fiber out so that what is left is really thin and really easy to get to integrate um, into what's wrapped without leaving a lot of bulk. And the tail gets more treatment. The, the pipe cleaner is so. a little floppy. It's a little tricky to wrap if you're new. Yeah. <laughs> My whole mouse right now is, is floppy. Okay, we need to do the, the tops of the hind legs now that I got the tail on. And I'm using my two halves of a six inch piece, which I've sort of smoothed out a little bit. When I do the hind legs, I tend to anchor around the body. It just seems to work really well. And then I'm gonna go down to where the alabaster is. Now I'm gonna use the crisscross again in this, this isn't a, a hard, you know, a hard angle um, right angle. It's a rounded right angle, but it works the same way. So if I go around the top, skip through the center and jump to the bottom, and then around the top, and then down here, and then around the top, that makes a nice little cushy mouse thigh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the rest of it I'm going to use where it's needed to kind of smooth, smooth all of that out. But I did use that whole six inch piece. I love this color, the copper. Oh, that looks so sweet. Okay, my other side is not as good. If I were really good, I would do it right-handed, which would be exactly the same. But I have to do it left-handed. When you do it, it ends up a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to exaggerate that curve. I'm going to go up here, and then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go up here. Um, I think I'm going to stay up here. I don't think I need to go down there again. And then when I stab this, I encourage it flat, less log-like and more um, kind of slab-like. Okay, now let's get some fiber on the body. I think the six inch pieces work well. Split in half. So I just took that from the back up to the front and back. And I'll do that again. Starting to look like a little being. Mm -hmm. This time I'm going to concentrate more of my piece of roving towards the back because we want them to get just a little wider as we go back towards his belly. All right, the next wrap is one of my favorite things to do, which is to fill out his thigh and butt here. So let's take four inch piece, split it in half lengthwise. And all you're gonna do is start on the back, go around the thigh, and then return to the back. And that just brings all of this um, section of the body and leg together. I'll show you, I'll sh I will show you right-handed on the other side. I'm feeling that confident. Okay, so if you're right-handed, 
you start on the back, you go around the leg, and return to the back. Usually I do that on the front legs as well, a similar wrap, but this little, this little critter is so small, it doesn't need it. When we make, uh, we're gonna make two pelts and they kind of encapsulate, encapsulate the, uh, the front and hind legs. It's time to make the face, Milo. Mm, that's exciting. I know. Let's hope it goes smoothly. Okay, we're gonna make the face next. And to make the face, we need to, well, I find it most helpful to make a couple of shapes on the faces. One will be uh, a forehead, and then we'll make two shapes that will be cheeks. And then we will, um, then we'll finesse it all together with the eyes and the little, uh, the little details. So using the copper, let's see, let's try four inches. We'll take half a piece. And you know, when you have this here, when you're making these shapes, you could do two of each. That way, when you go to make your next mouse, everything is ready. And you know, it's about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five inches up on the face ace we want to wrap, it's about two, of, two thirds of the way up the face ace, we want to wrap an inch area of, um, of the tool. And I'm traveling just a little bit just to make sure it's consistent, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going up and back, maybe a little bit of a crisscross. So I, I, used, um, I used that whole four inch piece. And we're gonna do the same thing with Serafina White for the cheeks. So I'm gonna take a four inch piece. This is a little thicker, so instead of splitting it in half, I'm going to split it in half, and then I'm going to split it into quarters. Serafina White is a blend that we created to um, to try to get a nicely felting fiber as white as possible. So it's really useful in your, in your felting arsenal. And that looks about the right size to me. I'm, I'm pulling off a little bit of extra. There's, you know, the roving is never completely the same. Our sculptures are never completely the same. So the tutorials are never like hard and fast rules. They're guidelines. Um, guidelines to get you hopefully with good results. You want to tell me another proverb before I put these shapes on? It's a good one. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> a, ma a mouse catching dog steps on the cat's paws. A Chinese proverb. <laughs> That's funny. It's like stay in your lane dogs. <laughs> And then we're gonna put these on. So the, when I make a shape on the tool, what's funny was this was on the thinner part of the tool and this was on the wider part of the tool, but it's bulkier at this end. So there's always like a bulkier end and a more tapered end. So I try to feel, feel that so that when I put the shape on, I'm using it in a way that complements the sculpture. So the forehead, is gonna go from back to front. I'm putting the tapered end towards the nose. This is just giving him a nice rounded head. And the other end is um, blending into his, his no neck. And then the white pieces, same thing. I have a more blunt end and a more tapered end. I'm gonna put the, the bulkier end towards the back of the head and the tapered end towards the nose. 
And you want your, um, you want the shapes that you make to have some, you know, to, to come together and not be, ultimately you want them to blend. Do you know what female mice are called? Um, I don't. It, it seems a little strange to me. The what? females are called does and the males are bucks. Oh, wow. But they don't have fawns. Uh, what are their babies, babies are fawns? called pinkies, kittens, or pups. They're just mixing up species uh -huh. there. Pinkies. Here's some crazy. After six days, baby mice have fur, can move and squeak. After 18 days, they're ready to leave the nest. Six weeks old, female mice can start having babies. Well, that's a problem. Right? This is <laughs> what they're doing at night. It's going to be helpful to have his little head on something here. You can look at your project from above, and that gives you a good indication of your symmetry. So I have like a poofy cheek here. And then we do want to make with the Serafina white a little, a tiny little, tiny little chin. This will be too much. Um, this I guess was half. I'm going to split this in half. And I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap, I'm going to wrap about in the same place, but I'm going to keep it really thin. Like, not, I'm not trying to make a big poofy shape. I'm just trying to make a flat, a flat shape. So I went around four times, pull that extra off. And then when I slide this off, I'm going to shape the end. This end feels like it'll do it better into a little chin by stabbing it in on itself. So just making a little rounded ghost and then leave this side fringy because it will blend in so you'd leave a little space between the i nose. happen to have space oh yeah little he's got a little overbite so you want you don't want the chin you know right up under the nose. But that's his general head shape, and we will, um... <laughs> he's so funny, his little chest. I'm gonna bring up a picture to help me. Okay, their faces are so funny. Sometimes they look like they have a hooked nose, but they do have like a little poof on each side of the cheek. So let's take some Gen Gen Tan and blend it with alabaster. Just have a little like inch of each. I'm just gonna pull it apart and put stack it back together and we'll make little cheek poofs. Chinese proverb. Okay. Even when a girl is as shy as a mouse, you still have to beware of the tiger within. Oh, yes. So instead of making a shape, I'm going to break this down into as little of a floofy pile as I can and just stab it in place. And the goal is to get a little bit of roundness. That needle is a little fine little bit of roundness right on each side of the nose here. Like that.
And this also starts to blend the cheek together, gives us a little bit of a muzzle, I guess, is what I'm going for. what he looks like at the moment. It's so funny. It's time for ears. Okay, using the alabaster, I still have a strip here. We're gonna um, make two crisscrosses and just felt a really thin ear shape. So I'll make an X with alabaster little one inch pieces. Whenever I think mouse ear, I always think of, you know, the totally round Mickey Mouse mouse ear. Yeah, but yeah. they're definitely, they have a little bit they have of a little shape. shape yeah. The punch tool is helpful on flat things. I want them to be as thin as possible, well felted. I do like to put a little color on the back. We can actually take that, uh, if you have any of that alabaster and tan mix, you can put that at the top of one side. And that'll be the back of the ear. I usually put like a little bit of color on the back of the ear. And just, you know, stab this a lot because it's it's gonna get, this is it, this, this'll be um, the last that the ears um, get felted. So you want them to be well, really well established. I'm not stabbing too much at the end opposite the color because that's where I'm going to attach it. And if you overstab, uh, it won't felt, it won't keep felting. So just really working on the top portion of the ear. And then using our scissors, we can cut them, cut all the fringe off. I'm putting them face to face here. Just give them a nice ghost shape, nice rounded shape. Mice can squeeze through openings as small as the size of a dime. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're, they're tiny. I don't think there's, you know, there's a lot of projects that I, I don't get as small as the mm -hmm. real thing. Hummingbirds, generally, um, mice, some of the birds. Things can be teeny tiny. You can make them small, but you can't have that level of tiny, teeny tiny right. detail, you know? Mice can have up to a dozen babies every three weeks. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That, that's a lot of mice. So on the back of the head where the copper meets the white cheeks, that's where we want to put the, um, the ears. I might just give them a little bit of a fold. So half my bottom of my ear is getting stabbed into the cheek and half of it is getting stabbed into the copper. And these will get more and more stabbed as we put the pelt uh, and top coat on. But they do have some distance between, um, between their ears. So you don't want their ears like right on the top of the head.
in your supply pack is some black and the best way um, to get started is just to take a, a really thin strip like a quarter inch strip and then maybe take like two inches of that for each eye there's a few ways to go about making a round eye. I've been folding it in my hand lately. You could also wrap the face ace. The danger with, or um, a toothpick or a skewer, the danger with wrapping a tool is that they tend to get almond shaped or oblong. So you really have to be careful that when you sl slide it off the tool, you really work towards a sphere. Um, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna fold it in my hand so I can, I'm folding it over and then I'm folding the sides in and that will help me keep it very round. And that's probably big enough. So I'm not quite using all of my fiber and it's still a little oblong, but when I put it on, I'm going to make a point to stab it um, into a circle and I'm putting it um, towards the back of the head on the side between the cheek and the forehead crease. And if you come in at this edges, it's really gonna keep it, gonna keep it round. One thing, um, when we made this project, it was for a fiber fairy giveaway and the giveaway giveaway was on uh 22222 and so we made the theme twins or doubles and um this this particular type of mouse is monogamous which i don't think other mises are necessarily no it's only i saw somewhere like five percent of all animals okay it's very small yeah and the males do help with some of the child rearing. I wonder what happens to species that are monogamous when one of them dies. Is it a Romeo and Juliet type situation? <laughs> Is it more of a... I don't know. I mean, mice... Sorry about your luck. I can't wait to meet another The mice partner. have a have five to six month lifespan typically because of predators, so... It's not really an issue. Yeah, <laughs> They're like, ah, two days without my partner. Our mouse is starting to look like a little mouse. So we're gonna make two pelts. An a belly pelt and a um, back pelt and they are what kind of like not kind of oh geez my gnome went gnome overboard they are what pulls the whole thing together and then we'll add some transitions to the face the mice are a fun complement to the gnome because gnomes our gnomes are um, life-sized well, maybe slightly larger than life-sized like our mice and our birds, but all the life-size projects are like to hang out with the gnomes. I got lots of critters falling over here. Okay, so to make the belly pelt, we're gonna use Serafina white, and we want it to be approximately um, four inches by three inches. So I'm gonna take a nice, wide piece and then a, like a three inch piece and then a two inch piece. So it has a little bit of a taper to it. And then I'm gonna take a strip and I have some leftover over here and I'm gonna go vertically. This might be a little bit wide. I'm just gonna restack a little bit here. Okay. And 
and take a look at some pictures. They, they really do all different kinds of things in terms of transitioning from tan to white or um, where that transition is. And then if we can, we'd like for the pelt to just go across the hind inside of the hind legs and kind of like up and start to blend this chin cheek area and onto the inside of the front legs. You can add, if you want them to be fat, you can take a little bit of um, core and just make a soft pillow Stick it on under there. Give them a little belly. Yes, you want them to be fat. <laughs> I also let the white pelt come down onto the tail area. Mice and rats sort of have that dumpy butt where Their body also morphs onto their, onto their tail. I'm not gonna stab too much more right now until I figure out where I want it, how I want it to blend with the top coat pelt. That's how it looks, just kind of sticking off the edges right now. And then for the back pelt, um, we're gonna do Gen Gen Tan, same size might take a few pieces. Then you can decide if you want the tan to blend into the white. If that's the case, then when you add other colors, you're gonna leave them just to the inside of the tan. But make sure it's not stripey and that you have a nice consistent sort of palm-sized piece. And then you can, you can use copper. You could just use the nut. You could blend the tan with the nut. You could blend the nut with the copper. Um, you can make a lot of different colors. I'm gonna blend the nut and copper. And then I'm gonna put um, maybe just some nut or some nut and tan Let's see, let me make two piles. I'm gonna blend some of the nut and the tan as well. Or the nut even alone is a nice color. I've done them all different ways, I think. So put this on the edges and a little bit of the darker color down the center. Here's an Italian proverb Ooh, from, from your people. Yes, the Italians are. If, if you are a mouse, don't follow frogs. You're Italian, so you should be able to explain that to me. Because <laughs> you don't know how to swim. Mice swim. I mean, most animals know how to swim. They don't like it. If you're a mouse, don't follow frogs. Maybe it's just meaning like, be true to yourself. Don't try to be, maybe it means follow, like not literally follow them into the water, <laughs> but follow like. Did this proverb exist before cars existed? <laughs> and is it referring to the game Frogger? Frogger? <laughs> Don't go in the street <laughs> because mm, it's funny. This is a good one. Also Italian never was a meowing cat, a good mouser. Yeah, this is very true. in the pot than no stew at all. Ew. That's Italian too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
My people are wacky. This must be Northern Italians. <laughs> <laughs> The, this pelt, <laughs> you can bring around the ears. You can do all kinds of good things with. So I'm gonna start by making sure it's centered and get it going. Probably a little oversized, but that's okay. I'm gonna work it out. Oh, it's very soft though. What? English proverb, the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. <laughs> That's a good one. So I put a little split in it and I'm gonna sort of tuck it around the ear here, see how that looks. I've got some on the forehead. One thing about making pelts and well, a lot of the text that, techniques that we use is that it sort of naturally makes interesting um, markings and blends things together without too much work, you know, it does fun things. So I try to encompass the thighs and the upper arms because they really do Um, they really do look like a, a body with legs. Like, uh, it looks a little bit like roadkill at the moment. <laughs> I know, it looks a little, a little smooshed. All right, I'm being a little random right now, but so can you. All right, so this is where you get to decide, like, do you want the white to dominate the sides of the belly or do you want to turn it this way and let the brown? Most of them, I've brought the brown around. So I think it would be kind of fun to bring the white up. We'll try that. See how she goes. Because I have seen a lot of pictures where the white comes up. So on the front arms, what I'm thinking is triangle. In other words, wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. Really on his little, um, on his little elbows. So I'm sort of finding that and stabbing it back into that. It's right here. You really could totally lose the whole arm if you're not careful. Here's an African proverb. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a mouse and a bat at the same time. Hmm. What do you make of that one? Is that like the frog situation? I guess. I guess so. <laughs> ah, I can't be a Sarah and a Milo. No. You can't be a Milo and a Egret. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> This is, these are very, not very clever proverbs. <laughs> so with their pelt, you can either pull extra fiber off, see if it wants to wrap around. Um, just got to fuss with it and...
feel like it's harder to bring the white up. Just pointing that out. <laughs> Maybe try more than one and see what you like better. But I'm gonna get this pretty well, I'm gonna try this other needle too. I'm gonna get this pretty well felted on here because we can reverse needle um, some transitions and stuff and that will be fun. The pelt further holds down the ears. Ooh. What? Spanish proverb. Okay. Brace yourself. I'm ready. Love is like a mouse trap. You go in when you want, but you don't get out when you like. Don't 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 be joking about love. <laughs> it's not a joke. You go in when you want, but you don't get out when you like. I think it's the opposite. Like you can't help you can, you find yourself in there without any choice at all. You can't just decide you're going to stop loving somebody, though. You can, but you, either way, you can't. I avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid that one. <laughs> My mouse is... I got to tell you. He needs a little, a little I have made squeaking. better mice. We are having a little bit of an off day here today. I wonder where Mercury is going. <laughs> it's really just mostly me. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the planets. All right, we need some transitions and some tail floof and a lot more stabbing. and maybe for my brain to operate on an entirely different day. We're gonna get there. It's good for a tutorial to see the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the tail, that will be satisfying. And then we'll get the face, face transitions done. So on the top, I've been using uh, Gen Gen Tan. And I do have a little bit of this blend left so I will add some of that as it gets closer to the body but I just put as you know as narrow of a piece as I can pull like break it down to as small as it is can be across the across the tail and carefully stab into that wrapped armature all over and then I said I was going to put a little bit of a blend with the nut towards the top. I was talking to a friend about whether love is overused or underused. The word? Yep. So one argument was that using it too much dilutes it. Hmm. But I don't, I don't agree with that because I don't think love can be diluted. I think love is love. I'm on the underused, team underused. We should express, express it more. I wonder what our little mice say to each other if they have a love language. Our little old field mice? Yes. I got you this cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go all the way into the farmer's house. And then I put, do the same thing across the bottom with white. And this is a fun little technique that gives you a cool looking tail. If the cat sits long enough at the hole, she will catch the mouse. 
Wisdom of the Irish. Mm. I overheard the um, opposing team's tennis coach, the game yesterday, say, luck follows hustle. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to use that at work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> if you're making tiny toes, not so much. <laughs> So once I'm sure that this is as embedded into the tail wire as possible, I can trim it. Oldfield mice have a two-tone tail. If you were making a house mouse, you would maybe just use the alabaster and have a pink tail. And so when I trim, I try to go slightly tapered. So narrower at the end, a little wider towards the butt. disrupt it, like make it not quite so cut looking. You can roll it in your hands if you want to get it more. Oh, can you slow-mo that? <laughs> <laughs> the, the mouse is going to be like... French proverb. Okay. A dead mouse feels no cold. So terrible. It's dark. It is dark. All right. I'm not super happy with my white coming up the sides. I might put a little tan transition there because it looks a little messy to me. So I'm just going to take a little bit of tan and put it over where the white meets the brown. That looks better. Looks much better. I wonder if people have felting face. Maybe, Audrey, when, <laughs> when you've edited, you've noticed. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what my felting face is. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite as dramatic as your, guitar face. You don't stick your tongue out. When Matthew did puzzles, he would always have a tongue. Yeah. Yeah. The focus. I think it's hopefully a look of concentration, not so much bewilderment or confusion. Sometimes maybe it is. There's a certain look if you stab yourself with a needle. Definitely. Okay. This guy is, you know, he's not... <laughs> He's not a great husband. <laughs> he's he's staying out with the, with the other mice too late. No, I'm gonna get him looking good. I'm gonna get him good. <laughs> to start to transition on the face, we need to put some blends. Um, and I'm gonna use tan and nut and make myself a nice little pile and put some transition on this face. 
Did I do brows? I don't think I did on these other guys. You could take a little piece. I thought you, you did an under. Little... I thought you did an under. Oh yeah, the under, under fleece. Okay, so take a little bit of our, an inch of our mix, put it, the center of it under the eye, stab that line, that's the center of the fiber, under the eye, and then fold it over. And that gives him like a nice little cheek fluff. I'll do that again. Actually, you know what? This is gonna end up being my best one. Yeah? Yeah. I was a little down on them too, too soon. It's hard for me to do this side without putting my head in the... Sometimes I gotta work upside down. Do not throw a stone at the mouse and break the precious vase. Oh yeah, just let him run. Mm -hmm. Just It's like the squirrel in the car. <laughs> Don't. Don't swerve. <laughs> you can't, you'll hurt yourself or somebody. Look, he is, he's, he's gonna be the best cute. one. Yeah. I was all judgy on him. Judge not the mouse before <laughs> you are done stabbing. Oh, I thought you were for real. <laughs> I was like, no. -uh. <laughs> The nut and tan mix is such a mousy shape. I just put a little bit more of that on the forehead here. Oh my gosh. I gotta tell you, I don't really know what their eyes are doing. Sometimes they look small and beady to me, and sometimes they look really sticky outy. But we do need a white dot, no matter how you think of them. It's a tiny, tiny bit of Serafina white rolled in your fingers, stabbed in one place with a spiral needle or a 42, 40 or a 42. The white dot proportionately should be one fifth. This is a proverb. This is a felting proverb. So is Judge Not the Mouse before you <laughs> finish stabbing. <laughs> I'm sure there is a, a size that this is. Because if the white dot's too big, it just, everything goes wrong. The proverb is, a bigger life spark does not make it better. <laughs> what do we call it? Light of life. What do we call it? The life spark. The life spark. We're here to keep everybody wise. Oh my gosh, she's so funny. Whiskers would be good. Could put whiskers. I, I, I sort of stopped whiskers <laughs> four years ago. <laughs> I don't Who know needs what whiskers? <laughs> I guess it was sort of like tiny toes. I wanted to. Okay, one. Well, there's other things we could do. Definitely look around for places that might need a color, a um, little bit of a blend or you know, a little more help than what I have demonstrated <laughs> along the video. But 
using the uh, reverse tool, do you mind passing me the pen tool with the black on the handle? You can um, have a lot of fun pulling um, fuzz out, blending colors, make them a little weird and hairy, but on the, along the body, so my, so I have, you know, some pretty distinct lines here because instead of my pelt transition color was on the edges and instead of bringing that down around under the mouse, I brought the white up. So I kind of lost my pretty transition. So I can use this tool and I'm kind of pulling backwards. Um, so I'm pulling fiber out, but I'm also sort of pulling back towards me, almost brushing it towards the back of the mouse, I should say, because I just turned them around. So anywhere that you see that could use a little blending. We never found the um, comb, did we? No. Because if you had this felt it a little better than I have, um, which I will do. Um, you can felt more than I felt in a tutorial. Um, you could pull the fuzz out and brush it back, which would, which looks kind of cool. With the little, I mean, you could just use your claw. hand, but you could use yeah. the clover claw would help because the clover claw would also help, um, blend the fibers a little bit too in this, in this case. The reverse tool is great because you can you can really get involved and evolved with it. So whatever you put underneath is what you're pulling out. Um, there's just a lot of t times in more advanced projects that I've really used that to my advantage. I think it'll make him cute if I kind of felt his little ears over a little bit. All righty, that is our, that is our project. I want to make nests. That's a good looking mouse there. I did okay in the end. <laughs> he's asking, looking like he's asking me for some cheese. There's always more felting that can be done. Know what I mean? What? That sounds like it could be a felting proverb as well. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, check out the mouse felt along because we made this project as a felt along, which was a longer process because we were doing it live um, and there was a lot of interaction. And, but there might be some different techniques that I used and that mouse will look a little different than this mouse. So you have two videos to pull from for this supply pack, uh, which is great, but they are a lot of fun. I think, you know, once you get good at this, I can make a mouse in about 45 minutes or so. Um, so it's a fun project. Definitely a great way to step up from level one to level two, you know, with a little felting under your belt. This might've been the OG, this guy. 
It's kind of cute. He looks a little more like a hamster. They all look delicious. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you hit the bell, then you'll get notified whenever we make a new video, which is pretty often. And we have a lovely group of felters on Facebook called Serafina Felting Fanfare. And that's a great place to ask questions and share your work and get inspired by other people's work. What else do we, do we need to say? I think we're going to see a lot of mice on Fanfare soon. Yeah, good. I can't wait. Thanks so much. Bye.